same to uh, Eric Cantor. Elections have consequences, and I won. And this is whole arrogance, um, and that's not what we heard from President Clinton in terms of cooperation. That will be an important question in this election. President Obama has obviously low ratings on the big issue, uh, the economy. He's blaming a lot of it on Republicans. It is part of the article, it is an article of faith among Democrats that this president was obstructed at every turn by Republicans who made up their minds in the beginning, quoting Mitch McConnell and the famous comment about making him a one-term president, that they weren't going to work with him, they're going to try to block everything he did. Another side, but there's a whole other side of that argument suggested by the, the, comment, uh, the comments of Bob Woodward that he didn't offer them very much. In other words, when you look at the composition of the stimulus bill or the health care reform bill, there weren't a lot of ideas in there that would have attracted Republican votes, so they felt utterly free to vote against those things. But there's something different about being president. Of course the opposing party is an obstructionist. They always are obstructionists, but you have presidents like LBJ who is constantly working the hill, constantly working relationships so that you can overcome those log jobs and you can and you can and you can get things done. I mean it's not just a game of well the other side blocked me or that so and so is arrogant. I mean the, the a leader has got to overcome it. You can't say, well it's just too hard. Well I, I think that's true, and I think historically that's been one of the challenges that presidents face. They often had opposition, um, but remember, for Democratic presidents for, for most of this past century and into this century, most of the time had, had control of both houses of the Congress, or at least control of one, and this president had control of both, which makes the argument, it seems to me, that he was obstructed by the Republicans when he had complete control of the place for the first two years, pretty lame. Well, I did some research and uh, and going back to to January 23rd 2009 about three days into into his presidency he says to his opponent I won now that is a fact he won but if you're seeking to sort of be the leader and try to realize that you've got to work with this political enemy that's not a very that's not a very good start and that's three days into the presidency I agree that uh, there's a, that's a, a sense of matter of personality and style some presidents Bill Clinton being a good example sort of naturally charming, they had a schmooze the other side, they you know, worked with the people of different ideologies through the years. This president, it seems to me, doesn't particularly like to do that. And I, look, I don't blame him for that. But, but it I, doesn't, I, here's, here's what I'm asking the president. Can you get something done in Washington unless, you know, you've got to sort of swallow, you know, swallow your pride a little bit and work with the opposition uh, and, and even, you know, even things you don't like? I, I think you have to do that. But Greta, here's the, what I think is more important is not whether you, you know, shut somebody off by saying I won. Now that, that's a blunder in my opinion. The, the critical question is whether in doing business with the other party, you were willing to compromise on key points to give them something that would attract their votes. In the end, it doesn't really matter as much whether the president's a good schmoozer or a good socializer. If he, he gives members of the other party pieces of the legislation that they and their constituents like, it makes it much harder for them to vote against the end product. That's what you need to do. Did, That's the did, ingredient did of government. Do I don't think, I think a pretty fair argument can be made that on major pieces of legislation, the stimulus bill, which is his principal effort on the economy, the health care reform bill as well, which was his principal effort, period, if you think about it, he gave them very little to attract them. And but he didn't, he didn't get any of them. Well, but he didn't, I mean, for the, for the, for the health care and for stimulus, he didn't need them. Well, well, he didn't need them to actually pass them. But look at this condition they're in now. If you make, if you pass a major piece of social legislation that changes everything immensely, and you do it with your party alone, it will always be vulnerable. This is vulnerable. Brett, thank you. You bet. Straight ahead is President Obama happy with President Bill Clinton. Joe Trippi is here to talk about that. That's next. Also, Republican Senator John Barrasso is here. What is he doing in Charlotte? He's going to tell you himself. Our live coverage from the Democratic National Convention continues. President Obama just officially, of course, receiving his party's official nomination for president. But the roll call behind us continues on the convention floor. Stay with us. In Tampa, the Republican argument against the president re-election was actually pretty simple, pretty snappy. It went something like this. We left him a total mess. He hadn't cleaned it up fast enough, so fire him and put us back in. <laughs> 